Well, hello everybody, and welcome back to our playthrough of Team Extreme Operation Lair Disaster. This will be part two, and I think there'll probably be one more part before the series ends, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, so let's just jump right back into it. Let's go to load game. I have interfaced with... And the best way to do that is to go to the scene of the crime. Tell me who. Just to refresh, let's watch this again. On our way. The weatherman was once a real weatherman at a television station in Arizona, but then something happened. Our records indicate that he was obsessed with destructive weather, but the weather in Arizona was normally very calm. One day, he simply snapped. He went crazy during a broadcast and began forecasting tornadoes, hurricanes, and... Hold on. I'm receiving a transmission on one of the Team Extreme coded frequencies. I will display it on the VidCom. Little ball, we thought you'd be deactivated, mate. Down, but not out. I've made a new friend who was resourceful enough to bring me back online. Well, whoever your friend is, we can surely use your help. I'm transmitting from the Team Extreme substation in London. It's, uh, a trifle wet down here. Something of a downright washout, actually. The lady's thing from Canterbury is that there's been six inches of rain in the past hour, and it doesn't show any signs of stopping. Anyways, our Doppler radar is showing the worst of the storm activity centered around Stonehenge, of all places. We're hoping you'll pop by, take a look at things, and report back while we try and see what we can do on this end. We will attempt to determine the source of the storm anomaly, Alfred. Please take care. Hey, will do. This is Alfred. Over and out. Stonehenge was originally built by the Druids as a way to mark the seasons, but my sensors are detecting readings that are not the norm for this area. Something is happening here, but I do not have enough data to draw any conclusions. We should investigate the area. Okay, so they say Stonehenge was made uh, to mark the seasons, though I've heard many theories on that. Anyhow though, here we are, right at Stonehenge. So let's just grab a couple of things. Once again, this screen is ridiculous. <laughs> Gotta be very careful when I move. Okay. Got a rock and a sign. And we'll use this wooden pole to get this. Well, okay, I can almost touch the gun with the pole. Okay, so how do we get up there? We can't put the rock there. Okay, so we need some probably stand on. All right. Okay, because that has been a long time since I played this portion of the game. Probably a good number of years. Okay. We can use the rock with this. We can use it to climb up. Uh. There is no record of an object such as this in any previous survey of Stonehenge. It must have been activated by some hidden emergency system. Okay, so this is a puzzle. We obviously got to put this, put these directions in their right place. Okay, northeast. We gotta move them around here. There you go. It's a compass. A compass? I was not aware that the ancient druids used such instruments. The carving seemed to relate to the wind, or the wind direction. So we need so we need a needle like thing to stick in there. And we can use a sign for that. Something is ha happening. The altar. Quickly, let us go see where that passage leads. Alrighty. So the wind is blowing from between west and northwest. No access allowed. You have been warned. That bot is a Storm Chaser Series 3000 weather bot, but it has been reprogrammed somehow, probably by the weatherman. We must find a way past it. The answers to a great number of questions are most definitely down there. Alright, so let's use some copper wire. 
to shoot at this for a fight. And just like that, we're down. Amazing. This room contains technology far in advance of anything possessed by the druids. There are rumors of another people, the ancients. This is very peculiar. Allow me to consult my database. This item is extremely similar to an aneroid barometer, but it has been damaged somehow. From its heat signatures, I have determined that it was used quite recently, probably by the weatherman, and then sabotaged. I do not think I like him very much. Okay, so this is obviously... We got a roll of paper, and we got a pen. I think we need like two more things to fix that. Very careful when <laughs> this makes the game much harder than it should be. We got a piece of metal. And here we got another puzzle. And we can use the uh, the glyph reader here. Knowledge lies within. That is true. So we gotta match these symbols. One. Got two. Oh. <laughs> we got all kinds of shapes here. Got that one. That one. Oh. Okay, I think I just saw that one. Where is it at? I think it was down here. Oh, it wasn't it either? I still got that one. Let's see. It's another. It's another. That one. There's that one. Okay, we only got two more to match. All right, we got it now. I've solved your puzzles. And we got a stool. Can use to get to that piece of gum. I have digitized and filed this carving for further reference. In the future, you can access my database to examine the stored image. All right. Okay, let's go back to that piece of gum we found on that one stone hinge there. I'm not sure how it got there, but probably some tourist. Wooden stool. And now we have the gum. That's it for the stool. Alright. This appears to be a manual override device for controlling local barometric pressure in case automatic control failed. Just a moment. I cannot determine why, but automatic pressure control is not functioning. We must bring the device online and manually correct the barometric pressure ourselves to stop these storms before the area is flooded. So we have to use... We have to know the barometric pressure in order to get access to that. And of course for that we use a barometer, which is this. So we had the piece of gum. 
we put that in that little hole there. And this wooden piece of metal can be used as a crank or something. And now, we can use it. So the ancient barometer reads 25.5 and still falling. Alright. So now, remember those symbols? These symbols right here? This indicates what we're going to have to put it into that screen there. The device will come online if we can input the correct code, but my internal cipher banks are not familiar with this equipment. Okay, so that should be correct. Now we've got to find the symbol for two, which I'm going to guess might be two lightning bolts. And there it is. Alright, this brings back some memories. Well, let's see what this is. Alright, this is a mini game. So, what's it about? Just gotta fight these red. red circles. Red targets. The trick is, though, is keeping your mouse right in this, this little thing here. To stop them before they reach the sides of the map. on broadband weather radio that the storms are already beginning to clear. We should return to headquarters now to analyze the information we have gathered. Perhaps we can learn what the weatherman hopes to accomplish. Alright, good work everyone. We have restored the weather piece. Well, we restored peaceful weather. Alright, let's get out of here. All right, let's go back to headquarters. Find out what's up there. Just gotta keep the cursor going. There, you know? Enjoy the flight. Good movie on here. I'm receiving another coded transmission, this time from the Team Extreme substation in Cairo, Egypt. Hold on, just a moment. Milibar, Alfred told me you were back online. I am still operational, but we have a big problem. Yeah, the weather, man, I know. Josie had a split from headquarters after he threatened to run the place over with a bunch of tornadoes. She made the correct decision. We do not know what he is capable of. Yeah, well, we've got some major level problems of our own out here. The temperature has gone crazy in the last few hours been dropping like a stone nearly 100 degrees according to the instruments. I have been able to localize the center of the temperature drop to the Giza Plateau of all places. If you and your new pal can go check it out, I'll stay on top of things here. In the meanwhile, I've got my hands full just trying to keep the camels from turning to popsicles. 
Thanks, Doc. Our pleasure, Cleo. The readings here are similar to Stonehenge. This must be another weather control point that the weatherman has somehow gained access to. We must find the control center and correct this problem quickly. Okay, this is not how I remember. <laughs> this is not how I remember Egypt looking. The pyramids should not be covered in ice. No, they should not. Alright, we got some we got a magnifying glass and a chisel. Alright, let's use a shovel. And we got the right half of a scarab. Let's see, I think there's something else here. There's something over here. Okay, we got something in this ice over here. Let's chisel through it. Left half. Ooh, and we got salt. And we got thermos. No, but I can't look in the picnic basket. Uh, so there'd be some bread or you know, something in there to eat. Mm -hmm. Alright. Let's see. Alright. I think that's all. Huh? Maybe there's something over here. Yeah, the scarab. Alright, I remember this. Ingenious. This puzzle would have been extraordinarily difficult for any of the ancient Egyptians to solve. They probably had never seen a stuff like. I wonder who created the puzzle then? Yeah, I remember when uh, uh, when I first played this game when I was a kid, I had no idea what to do with this puzzle. But here's just a bit. You have to align these objects from warmest to coldest. Uh, from what I recall, I think Snowflake is the coldest. I'm not sure what else is, though. So let's see. I think Millibar has the answer somewhere. Yeah, that's pressure. That's how to convert. Precipitation. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, see, these... Th these can be the coldest. And the needles... Uh, the... No, the thin plates are the warmest. Needles are second warmest. And these hollow columns are the third warmest. Sector plates are fourth warmest. And the dendrites, they're, they're the coldest. They're the snowflakes, that's what I call it. But these are actually all pieces of snow. There we go. Okay, so this is coldest. These are warmest. Alright, let's see if we can do this. Okay, something's still wrong there. It's coldest. The thin plates are the warmest. Okay. Something happened outside. Alright, let's take a look and see what happened out there. Hmm. Three. Entry is prohibited. 
Another robot blocking our way. Get rid of him. I don't know what's in this thermos in order for it to kill the robot. And of course, we got some icy steps. Probably can use some salt to get rid of that. This must be the control room. The energy signature here is almost identical to the one beneath Stonehenge. Only an extremely advanced society would have been capable of this technology. Maybe the ancients are not as mythical as we thought. This looks like another manual override device, similar to the one we used in Stonehenge to correct the barometric pressure. If we can find some way to activate it, we should be able to use this device to correct the temperature here in Giza. Can't put that in there. It's too dark. Oh. How interesting. Those mirrors are designed to catch and reflect the sun. Maybe by setting the wheels correctly, we can align one or both of them. We have successfully aligned one mirror, but the second mirror atop the Great Pyramid does not appear to be catching the sunlight. Position the Earth at the winter's solstice. Solstice. That's what they all say. All right. have the key to get into that other door. I want to go to the thermometer. Let's, let's go there. All right. An ancient thermometer. And someone has already been here before us and sabotaged it as well. Okay, we gotta fill in the hole first. It is currently minus 25 degrees Celsius. Well, well. Unbelievably cold. Hmm. The central figure in this carving resembles the Sphinx, while the placement of the two smaller icons suggests that they are the Great Pyramid and one of the Lesser Pyramids. This is obviously a control panel of some kind. have it turned. Let's see if there's any light coming through there now. No. No light coming through there yet. Okay, so apparently before we do that, we gotta go back down. Go back through that door that had the key in it. Oh, the key. Uh, the keyhole. Okay, let's go back in there. My cipher banks have translated those hieroglyphs to mean sun box. It is apparently a very elaborate lock designed to guard the king's inner chamber. Okay, this is the game. A little puzzle here. Yeah, I get this light chamber to go right into this eye. Probably a trick how to do this, but I am not that smart. Okay, so all I do is just keep on clicking until it appears in the right place. So this might take a while. I 
I seriously don't know what the truth of this is. So then we gotta get it one more up. We gotta get it to this one, I think. Got to every one except the one I need. Yeah, see, I just need to get to the middle one. That's it. It's just that middle one. Of course, that's the one I can't get to go to. Maybe some of you already know what to do. Do wish you can tell me. Come on. I'll get it eventually. Okay, I need to find a way to get that to go over there. So what's the trick? traveling through some of these squares somehow. Alright, finally did it. That puzzle is finally solved. Alright, now we have another... These wheels appear to be symbolic of the various arrangements of the Earth and the Sun according to the season. However, I am not clear on either their purpose or their function. Okay. Summer. Now the light should be in. Both mirrors now seem to be aligned and directed towards the Sphinx. But nothing appears to be happening. The beam of sunlight reflected by the mirrors must be used to activate something, but I'm not sure what. Okay. <laughs> Let's go back up into the Sphinx. I think now we should return. Analysis of the room geometry indicates that the sunlight must be used to activate the manual temperature override device, but we need some way to focus the ray of sunlight exactly. So 
we gotta do is just move this over. There we go. And there's a hole there to place the magnifying glass. My scan traces show that the manual temperature override device is now activated, but we still need the correct code to bring it online. It's minus 25 degrees Celsius, right? And we got another one of these things. Ugh. We gotta do this again. final boss of each level. is already beginning to rise. Soon this area will become the scorching desert it is supposed to be. I suggest we return to headquarters now. We must find a way to stop the weatherman before the situation grows any worse. Alright. Whew. Let's turn it around again. Head down the stairs. And I guess all this I guess all this ice is gonna melt. I hope so. This should be desert, not snow. Alright, let's get back into the... Let's get back into our vehicle. Alright. Let's have some dinner while we're at it. Something is not right. I was receiving downlink data from the Team Extreme Weather Satellite concerning a massive weather disturbance in the Pacific when the feed was interrupted. Some form of electrical interference has blocked the signal. The weatherman is most likely... Uh, the bar? You went there? The bar? Yes, Nimbo. What is it? I'm scared. There is no need to be frightened, Nimbo. Lightning is simply a natural electrical phenomenon. Yeah, so toothpaste. Toothpaste is not an electrical... Say, Nimbo, how would you like to help us out? Me? Yes, you. If you could send up one of the mini weather balloons with the radio... Yeah, the, the mini weather balloon, that's one of those... Looks like a hot dog, right? No. Yes, yes, one of the things that looks like a hot dog. Make sure it has a radio attached. Take it to the remote observation station. The playport and blow it up. We'll be there shortly. Yes, sir, Millibar Man, sir. I'll get right on it. I cannot believe that it has come to this. Well, let us hope for the best. Sir. The mini weather balloons are equipped with radios to transmit weather data back to headquarters. The radio should also be able to boost the signal from the Team Extreme Weather Satellite and break through the interference from the lightning storm. 
No doubt this lightning storm has been created by the weatherman to prevent us from finding out what he is up to. But what could he be doing in the middle of the Pacific Ocean? I do not detect Nimbo anywhere in headquarters. Perhaps he was actually able to launch the mini weather balloon, though I would not bet any processor cycles on it. We should be able to find him at the remote observation station where the play fort is located. His toy? The teeter totter Hindenburg with real exploding action. Coming back to me. Nothing in there still. There is something very peculiar about this terminal. Just a moment while I interface with it. No, I most certainly will not. You keep your private key encryption algorithm to yourself. Thank you very much. The nerve of some dumb terminals. However, I cannot blame it for its behavior. It has apparently been infected with a computer virus created by the weatherman. We will have to pass the access test in order to purge the virus and use the terminal. Alright, so like I said, if you want to do this legit way, you can look all this up and answer the questions for real. But I don't want to do that, so just, just click through it so you get them all right. It's a lot faster. Alright. Let's head down the elevator. Go to the observation station. Huh. If it'll let me take, if it'll let me go there. Billboard! I, I did just like you said. I got the mini weather balloon thing that looks like a hot dog, and now I'm blowing it up. Just like you said. What coding violation did I commit to deserve this? Nimbo, you are supposed to use the compressed air tank to blow up the mini-weather balloon. Can't. Why not? Because there's no knob to turn it on with, silly. Nimbo, where is the knob to the compressed gas tank? Well, since you guys never let me play with any of the cool toys like the hogo tank or the acetylene blowtorch, I had to play with my old toy. And the wheel broke off. And the... Not sort of fit, so then the batteries ran down. No, let me guess. You took the batteries from the radio. Yep. And you left the toy. Oh no, no. We shall just have to locate Nimbus toy. It is extremely important that we launch that weather balloon if we are to stop the weatherman. Bar. I think I'm feeling kind of woozy like. So I think I'll just fly down for a bit. <laughs> At least he will be out of trouble for a while. Alright. So now we know why the compressed tank knob was on the toy. Then we got a pen knife. It looks like it says it's like 4 o'clock right now. Alright. there. Alright. So, so we gotta go back up and get those batteries. Not in the hangar. They're in the rec room. And that's why we have the pen knife. <laughs> it takes five batteries. Even though two are in the inventory. Okay. Alrighty. Go back down, launch that balloon. Very slowly. Okay. Batteries go back in the radio. And I think this knob should make it work. goes. Safe travel.
Alrighty, let's see how Sid's doing real quick, though. Hi, Sid. How are you doing? Okay. Sorry to bother you. Never mind. I think that Sid is still digesting. Something. Perhaps we should leave him be for now. Yep. He's still being alligator. Alrighty. Let's go back to the main computer now. And there's our old storm runner. We're still sitting there. Okay, let's get back into the headquarters, please. Going up. Main computer. So let's just add. There you go. I now have access to the Team Extreme weather satellite data feed. We can examine the information in real time at the holotank. And that is... should be right here. The, the data feed from the Team Extreme weather satellite is coming through now. Analysis indicates that the Pacific Ocean weather system that I previously detected is in fact a hurricane. Actually, a hyper-hurricane. Hurricanes are nothing more than tremendously efficient heat engines. They use heat energy the same way a car uses gas. I have triangulated the location of the energy source that is feeding the hurricane, but it is several miles beneath the ocean surface. Luckily, the storm runner has a submersible mode that will allow us to travel underwater. We should leave as soon as possible to investigate. I am sure that somehow the weatherman is involved. Alright. Reports of a storm runner immediately. There we go. This is the closest anyone has ever been to a hyper hurricane. Nearly 20 miles high, 500 miles in diameter, with wind speeds of over 300 miles per hour. Hold on, I'm receiving a coded ultraviolet priority transmission from our Team Extreme substation in Okinawa. This is Josie from Okinawa. We're currently reading a storm surge of over 12 feet and it's rising rapidly. Wind speeds are extreme and pressure's falling very quickly. We've lost our radar feed from Japan and all satellite imagery with it. I've never heard of. I am sure that the weatherman is somehow responsible for this. Figures. Well, I've ordered everyone to evacuate from coastal areas immediately, but I don't know how much that's going to help if this thing moves any closer. It's a monster. If there's anything you can do to stop him, we will do our best. That's all I can ask. Over and out. Our structural integrity is close to max. Luckily, we are not going into the hurricane, but under it. Activating submersible transformation. Make sure your seatbelt is fastened and prepare to die. We are going in. Incredible. An entire city, underwater. There are many legends of underwater or sunken cities, but they are all about the same city, the city of Atlantis. This must be Atlantis. I think I have located a method of entry. Hold on. My scan traces are picking up an energy signature identical to the ones from Stonehenge and Giza. Atlantis is probably another weather control point that the weatherman has used to create the hyper hurricane. And this time, we may have a chance to meet the weatherman face to face. Alright guys, here we are in the lost city of Atlantis. It's amazing, isn't it? You can be in Atlantis. So there'll be a lot to do here, a lot to explore. But for now though, I am going to stop the video here, and we will explore this area next time. This is a little preview though. Well, not that fast, but yeah, this is a little preview of what's to come. And we'll be able to see the weatherman face to face next time. Anyhow guys, thanks for watching. Hope you all enjoyed this gameplay, and hope you're enjoying the, uh, the game. And I will see you next time. Well, you all take care.